Welcome back everybody to the Shooting Gallery in New England. We appreciate you swinging by. Don't forget to make sure you like, share, and subscribe, and also hit the notification bell in the lower right hand corner. Make sure you get notified when you can get new videos like this every week. So since last week we went over how to safely work a single action revolver, it dawned on me that, you know, not just you want to learn how to safely work them, you want to be able to know how to clean them. So this week we're back at it again with the Heritage Rough Rider, and this week we're going to learn how to clean and lubricate a single action revolver, okay? So let's get down to the tabletop and we're going to learn how to do this, okay? All right, everybody, so now, as you can tell from the intro, this is how to clean and lubricate your Heritage Rough Rider 22 LR single action revolver. If you want to become a real single action uh, shooter, definitely start with picking up one of these. They're amazing value. Yeah, there are some ones that are more well-known brands like Ruger and Uberti and Cimarron and all that, but Heritage makes a very good product and is a affordable handgun or affordable single action revolver that you guys get into. So, if you're gonna get into a single action revolver, you wanna know how to clean it. So this is how to clean and lubricate a Heritage Rough Rider 22. We're gonna show you a little bit of a disassembly. I hope you guys enjoyed my last video of how to use a single action revolver. Where I go over the safety features, the some of the terminology, stuff like that because you know there are a lot of new shooters out in the world today so we want to make sure that we cover all the bases on all different types of firearm platforms so let's get into show, showing you how we uh, like to clean a single action revolver first and foremost we're gonna go over stuff we need let's get the handgun out of the way but before we go over the terms, I want to make this clear. When you are cleaning a firearm, there are four basic rules. Obviously, keep the firearm pointing in a safe direction. You want to also make sure that there is no live ammunition in your facility when you're cleaning the firearm, as well as making sure you're not pointing the gun you don't intend to destroy, and then also know the target, what is beyond it. God forbid there is some ammunition in the gun as you're cleaning it, but you want to be safe. Make sure there's no live ammunition around. And there is no live ammunition around where I am at the moment. And uh, let's get into what we are using. So obviously, we're going to need patches. We are going to need brushes. Not I usually, for single actions, I usually, I don't go too crazy. I use nylon brushes uh, just because I don't want to ding up because it is a blued gun. I don't really need brass brushes for this. Even though it is a rim fire and rim fires are typically more dirty. I'm still gonna be using just nylon brushes. I like to use a microfiber cloth. You don't have to keep that on the bench. I'm going to be using a pull-through cord. You can get these out of your Otis cleaning kits. And I have a 22 caliber brass jag where I can put the patches through and pull it through the bore. Now, when it comes to solvent, again, if you're looking at the thumbnail and if you follow the last two videos, I will link those down in the description as well. I'm using the Gun Cleaners Solvent and Gun Cleaners Lube. I did some videos on these guys. They were nice enough to send me this stuff way, way back when I was doing videos on them. Definitely go check them out. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to pick this stuff up. It's actually pretty affordable. I think the lube is like $12.50 and um, the solvent is like... 15 something like 15 around 1525 it could be the reverse I know in the videos I threw the pricing on the screen I might just throw the pricing on the screen now again just to make you guys guys see what how cheap it is so let's get into actually breaking down the firearm and uh, clearing the mat because I don't need all this crap in my way so obviously with a single action revolver the first thing you want to do is make sure the firearm is unloaded so what we're going to do is we're going to pull it back to the second position one two so free so now that frees up the cylinder we're going to open the loading gate and as you can tell just move the cylinder there is not a single bullet in any of the cylinder holes so this firearm is safe to work. So what we're gonna be doing, you, you do not need any tools to take down a single action revolver. It's actually quite simple. So what we're gonna do is make sure it's on, also make sure the safety is on and the safety is on. That's just kinda, it's redundant, but still you wanna make sure everything is followed. So on a single action revolver, you have this little button right here on the reverse side. You have this button right here. 
you're able to push it. You push that in, there's a little takedown knob right here. So you're gonna push this button, this allows the knob to be freed up, and you can then, with, uh, you can take out the bar that goes through the cylinder. Needs a little bit of finagling. So sorry about that guys. So I had to do this off camera because again, I don't really clean this that much because I, it's not really need to be cleaned as much. Uh, I did have to go off camera. Sometimes if you're, this is your takedown pin right here. This is what goes through the center of the cylinder. Sometimes it does happen because you gotta think there's something constantly rotating around it when you're screwing around with it or you're shooting it. It gets a little tight. So, there is some jimping on the very end of this to pull it out. It's always good to have a pair of pliers around. That's what I pretty much had to do because again, I don't really take this down a lot. So, now we're gonna take our takedown pin. We're gonna put that to the side. Now it is still on safe. Now you're pretty much able to open the loading gate and you can push the cylinder right out the side of the loading gate. That makes it simple. So this is essentially taken down to where it's ready to be field stripped. So. First and foremost, always check out where the bullets are going in. Make sure there's no knurling or there's no like pieces of like barrel getting shaved out of there. Just check that out. Visually inspect stuff. It these are pretty well made, pretty well made guns. You know, for the MSRP for like hundred and seventy five dollars, you can retail them for about hundred and fifty. I bought this for like one sixty seven. Kind of a random number, but. Again, for a $160 gun, they're very well made. I've never really had a problem with them other than, again, just make sure that your ejection rod uh, casing is not, the screw right here is not backing out. Just throw some Loctite on there. But again, it's a $160 gun. Things might happen. So what we're gonna do, first and foremost, we're gonna take a brass bra, well, yeah, we'll go with that first. We're gonna take a nylon brush. I know I just said brass, but we're gonna take a nylon brush and we're gonna use the solvent. So what we'll do is you don't need to really go too crazy with it. Just spray it like, you know, where you're gonna see particles. Spray kind of like right where the firing pin is. And that's where you're gonna to wanna to take your nylon brush and just Scrape all the carbon, stuff like that. I kind of go in between where the hammer is, just get that nice and clean. Uh, go to the breech of the barrel, get in there where the takedown pin's gonna be. Now go where the firing pin is coming out. Kind of go right where the, above the trigger is, how it moves the cylinder. Don't again. It's it's not like that labor intensive because you only have so much real estate to work with. But this is gonna. I want this to help people that have never cleaned a firearm before, and they're gonna be like, oh sweet, this is how I can clean a single action. This will pretty much go for. Don't quote me on this, but almost any single action, all you gotta do is take out the cylinder, clean where you gotta clean. Even though if you wanna go too crazy, I can take the side plate off and clean all in there, but this isn't that labor intensive where you're gonna have to get that far into it. Like if you are a, if you do cowboy action shooting, yeah, take down the, take out the side plate, get all in the trigger, all that, all those springs in there, clean that up. But this is just for general plinking, so I'm not gonna get too crazy with it. All right, so now this is pretty much all cleaned out. So I'll put that aside. And this 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 gun cleaner is uh, the solvent. This stuff is working great so far. I've cleaned a lot of my guns with it, and I'm really liking the um, result that I'm getting. So, take a microfiber cloth, just kind of clean the action out before you do anything. Make sure you get all that excess stuff. If you have to, take the hammer, pull it all the way back. Get it for the most part dry. Now, this is where you're gonna get pretty cool into it. Now, what I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm not gonna use a loop next. So what I like to do when it comes to the barrel, since, again, it's just a rim fire, 
I'm not going to go too crazy. I could do the, like, take, like, Hoppy's number nine out for cleaning the board, but it's not like I, I don't really shoot a lot of copper jackets out of here. Um, this stuff is good to put down the board, so I'm just going to spray it. Coat the board. All right, so that's all nice and coated. So what we're going to do... I'm not going to be putting a brass brush through this because, again, I don't shoot a lot of carpet, copper jackets out of this. I really just shoot, like, auto Federal Auto Match, which you have a, a, a lead nose. So I'm going to let that sit for about 10, 10 to 20 seconds, let it all get all in there. And now we're going to use this jag with the wire, pull-through wire, and I'm going to get a patch. Okay, cool. I use the bigger jet, uh, patches just because that's just how I roll. I don't like messing around with small things where I'm gonna drop it. So what I do is feed the patch through the jag. Now you can get these brass jacks through any Otis cleaning kits, guys. Um, Otis or um, Hoppies, you, name your given gun cleaning kit any pistol rifle i think even shotguns will have these type of jacks so it, it it's not like you can't find them i'm gonna leave a link in the description if you guys want to pick up some of these cleaning gears i'll throw some links down below so you can pick it up all right so now you put the pull through end so I actually did have to switch around and do muzzle to breech just so I can get the jag through because what was happening was the jag was hitting the outside of the loading gate so I wasn't able to fully go through the chamber. So we're going to pull this through, hopefully this comes through on camera. And finally goes through, just pull this through a couple times, make sure the loading gate's open so it can clear. Can push it through again. A little bit of a different orthodox style to clean my handguns, just because you know this is just how this is how it works for me. You can use some cleaning rods. I don't like to jam a huge rod and put it down the barrel because God forbid something ever happens. Think of it like this: if you take a, a cleaning rod with like a, a traditional. Like, you know, you have the T handle on the top and kind of like you're cleaning a rifle. If you're jamming that down the bore, where that's hitting is right in front of the firing pin. Again, it's a $160 gun, but I like to take care of my stuff, so if it takes me a little bit longer to clean something, I have no problem. I kinda am gonna be contradicting myself, just so I don't have to keep shutting the camera off. Because again, guys, you can find your own ways to clean your handguns, but this is just a general overview on how to clean a, a Heritage Rough Rider. Now, again, Different products will work for different people. I like using the gun cleaners. The pull-through cords can work for most of the time, but for some reason, obviously probably because I'm filming, that there's gonna be a little bit, a little bit of an issue. Um, but what we're gonna do now to lube, I always like to throw a nice thing of lube on the barrel, down the barrel just to keep it lubricated. Then I'll dry it with a patch. So this way I'll just spray it down the bore. And all right, cool, it's coming out. Now, cap that, cap the other stuff. And the good thing is too, guys, the gun cleaner stuff doesn't have like a smell to it. So let's focus that out a little bit more. All right, cool. So the gun cleaner stuff don't, doesn't really have a smell. It's not gonna be a toxic stuff. So it's not like if you have a Hoppy's number nine bottle that it's gonna be, oh, okay, I'm gonna get a little too high and not know what I'm doing. <laughs> We've all been there. So now I'm gonna take the other patch I used and we're just gonna clean the bore from the lube. Again, this is just to lubricate the rifling and stuff like that. I might be a little bit too create like different when I clean my guns, but I want stuff to work. Some guys, some people might not even lubricate the barrel after they put like a cleaning solvent down there, but it's all kind of user friendly. Whatever they wanna do is kinda their own thing I, this is just how i was taught i was a, i am like a creature of habit if you teach me how to do something a certain way that's how i'm gonna do it every time so i'm gonna take the patch and just kind of okay so now that i got that all figured out it's a little bit of a tight patch i didn't want to keep 
jamming it through on camera and hitting the tripod. So yeah, just make sure the bullet is clean, guys. I can't stress that enough. That's where all the bullets are coming down. So I know that was a little bit unorthodox to show you if you're a new shooter. Um, just remember, you're gonna find different ways to clean your guns. So don't take this as like pure scripture. So now what I like to do is I like to focus on the cylinder too. So again, we're gonna take the solvent and then just spray that all up. Cause again, this is where the bolts are gonna go into. Now take the brass brush, clean all the gears that push the cylinder around in the frame. Okay, the exit side. All right, cool, so take your microfiber cloth, wipe that all down. Okay. Now what I do recommend is this is again when the brass kind of T-handle thing comes into play. Since this is where the bullets are coming out of, this is where I recommend taking a brass brush, like a brass cylinder uh, brush like this and going through each of the holes just to be safe. Make sure you get any excess carbon because you don't want to have carbon built up in there because you could have some type of uh, failure to fire. You could have, you know, the rounds might not fully be seated properly. So I just kind of sit it on its side and take a brush, uh, the cleaning thing, just kind of go through, push it through. All right, cool. Now, okay, next one. Make sure that's going through. Take this off camera. It's kind of stuck a little bit here and there, guys. Just be careful with it. Go through. All right, there you go. So, now you get all the excess carbon built up out of there. And again, guys, I'm gonna leave links to any of the gear you want in the description of the video. Cleaning supplies is actually very inexpensive, so if you use too much and you run out, it's really not, it's always available. It's not like something people are stocking up on. I mean, unless you're like a crazy person, and you want to stock up on gun oil? Hey, dude, dude to each their own, man. So, take the gun lube, just kind of spray it around a little bit. All right. Make that all nice and good. Now, for the most part, guys, this is uh, all ready to be put back together. Now, what we're going to do is... Take the cylinder, get all the gun bottles out of the way so you have a clean workbench to put the fire on back together. Now, always make sure this gear side, you're gonna see like little teeth, make sure that's going facing towards the hammer because that's how it's able to enact the, the gears. So, enacting the cylinder, because you're gonna see these little notches. There's a spot right above the trigger that moves the cylinder and the, those, ge those teeth interact with the frame. So now you're gonna slide it back in. It's kind of plain, you're feeling for a certain wiggle room. And, okay, make sure it's at half, the second position. Always make sure you pull the hammer back to the second position so you're able to free the cylinder up. Take the cylinder pin, takedown pin, whatever you wanna call it. Slide that back in, make sure it goes in. You're gonna hear kind of a click. And that is that, guys. Now, what some people like to do just to make sure, even the gun cleaners will recommend this, take the spray lube and just spray it over the firearm. Kind of coats the, the finish 
and it allows no rust, nothing like that. Because this isn't a stainless gun, so you know you got to take a little bit more care of it. I just spray it all over the firearm and uh, give it a nice coating, and usually that's how it works. I hope you guys enjoyed this type of video. Look how nice and shiny that is. Everything seems to be working fine. So again, guys, thank you again for watching today. We're gonna have other videos on how to clean and lubricate firearms. Uh, and I will leave a link in the description. If you guys wanna go pick up the gun cleaners, solvent and uh, lubricant that we're using, the link will be below. Let them know that you well, saw it on Shooting Gallery in New England. They're very nice people out of Texas. They're very pro 2 way pro, uh, pro first responders, all that stuff. Wicked nice people, guys. Definitely go show them some love. Also, if you're going to pick up Heritage Rough Rider, I do recommend them. I believe I have a video. If not, I will be making a video on the Heritage Rough Rider. They're very good starter guns and even trainer guns. Uh, if you're going to get into cowboy action shooting, I really recommend starting with a 22 so you can get the feel for a single action revolver before you get into the Cimarron, the Uberties, stuff like that. So let's get back up top, guys. We're going to close this video out. Don't forget, guys, like, share, and subscribe. And we got a 250 subscriber giveaway. Link will be in the description below. So everybody, as you can tell, it's really not that not that hard to clean a single action revolver. These things are very easy to maintain, and since they are affordable, it what gives you guys the opportunity to learn how to clean them, how to shoot them, how to work them. There's so many different types of videos out there, so many different trains of thought. This is just how I like to clean my single action revolvers, and it's kind of the general consensus. So make sure you're getting that practice in. You know you're being safe with all your firearms. That's the key point here. If you're a new gun owner and you want to learn how to do more stuff like this, stay tuned to the channel. Try and subscribe if you want to. If we're giving you good content, that's what this stuff, this channel's here for. So have a go on everybody. We'll see you next week, okay?